We've got AEW and NXT tomorrow. They are stacking this. It's actually funny how how ridiculous this is. Wait, I thought, who cares, though? I thought we got nihilistic Brian Alvarez here. Who cares about this? Hey, listen, the point is, yeah. (laughs) Does it matter? Who cares in the sense that it doesn't matter who wins tomorrow? It makes no difference for the future of professional wrestling. No, it's fully their egos. There's lofts their minds. (laughs) There's literally no other reason other than ego to win or lose tomorrow, okay? But they're going nuts. So NXT has got... Carmelo Hayes versus Braun Breaker with John Cena, the second biggest draw in the company, uh, with Paul Heyman. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> in lowercase letters, in, well, with Paul Heyman. Well, how Paul Heyman is, is you know. This is very we'll, we'll important, I think, bit. though. We'll get to it later. Then we've got Roxanne Perez will be facing Asuka. Yes! <laughs> that was comic font. Then we've got uh, <laughs> the Brawling Brutes. Uh, so, you can say it with more inflection than that. Come on. The Brawling Brutes are going to be facing Tyler and Tyler Bate, six-man against Gallus. I screw that up every time. And then we've got Cody Rhodes coming to make a major announcement. Cody Rhodes on NXT against AEW. And they have now teased, and we still have one more show, by the way. But on Friday, they teased Undertaker and Becky. The Undertaker! This bloke doesn't even show up on Raw SmackDown. But he's going to be on NXT tomorrow. So, yes. They're going to reconstitute Bruno San Martino to appear on the show tomorrow. It's amazing what they're doing here. But look, you got to give it to them. Whatever's going to happen in that main event is going to somehow also play itself out on Raw and SmackDown because of what happened this weekend with the Judgment Day and Rhea Ripley asserting themselves in WWE as the bloodline continues to lose titles and lose matches. So... I at least they're stringing a lot of things together here. I may be overthinking this, but it just seems to make a lot of sense as we go into Survivor Series season. Now here is a T. Here's a Title Tuesday episode of AEW, and there is something we must talk about here. So I'm going to get to in a moment. We have timeless Tony Storm is ready for her close up. God bless. MJF will appear. Chris Jericho versus Powerhouse Hobbs. Jay White versus Hangman Page. Jay White claims this is a title eliminator for the belt that he stole from MJF. <laughs> Adam Copeland's debut against Luchasaurus. Brian Danielson versus Swerve with the winner getting Christian on collision this Saturday for the TNT title. Soraya defends the women's title against Hikaru Shida. And this is the interesting one. Ray Phoenix versus John Moxley for the international title. Now... Here's the thing. We uh, were plugging that uh, women's tournament all last week. And uh, for a f- the first couple of days, I was plugging the the John Moxley Gringo Loco match that was going to be taking place at the 8 o'clock show. If you'll notice, I stopped plugging that because I wasn't sure that match was going to happen. And as it turned out, AEW star John Moxley was not able to compete in his scheduled match for Wrestling Revolver on Sunday. He was supposed to face Gringo Loco, but Rich Swan ended up replacing him. Moxley appeared in front of the crowd and announced that doctors would not let him wrestle on the show. And then Gringo Loco defeated Swan in the match. Now, here's the thing. If this were virtually anybody else, I would say, well... Probably they want to save his first match back for AEW, right? Title Tuesday. However, there was a there was a match scheduled with John Moxley versus Nick Gage on a GCW show. Do you remember this situation? Mm-hmm. And at the time, John Moxley was not supposed to be the AEW champion. He was just going to go in and he was going to do a job for the guy. Well. He ended up winning the AEW title. And so immediately the question was, wait a second, this guy's the AEW champion now. No company on this planet would let him go to GCW and lose as AEW champion to Nick Gage, okay? But it's John Moxley. He had committed to it. And he was open that day, and he went and he did it, okay? So... He said 
that the doctors would not clear him on Sunday. They announced this match Wednesday. So, is he cleared? Is he going to be able to wrestle on Tuesday? If not, they should announce quickly that he's not going to be there. So, they're still advertising the match. I don't know what's going on, but that's pretty weird, dude. That's weird. Well, if he doesn't wrestle and they don't say anything about it, that would make the second time that this has happened now because I could be crazy, but Revolver was advertising, still had their tweets up, all of that stuff saying John Moxley was going to face Gringo Loco. And maybe, I don't know. I don't know exactly, but if he's, if there's any question with everything that's on there, with other people that could take it, why are you why are you doing this match now? Sounds like both guys. Well, they're doing it now because it's Title Tuesday. Who they're cares? trying to beat NXT? Brian, I know, but you know what? God bless. You can put that match on some other time when these guys are a lot more healthy. As you said, tomorrow it doesn't matter. So why hurt yourself worse? If tomorrow it really doesn't matter, go ahead and put another one of your 900 titles on there. Go ahead and do some other big match. Do something else. Be creative, for Christ's sakes, if these guys are too banged up to go out there on Tuesday or if there's any question that Moxley may not be able to go. I would assume that he said that so that those fans, those fans there could hear that, okay, a doctor has not cleared him yet, but in reality, you know, yeah, he actually is ready to go. I hope that's the case because otherwise, just pull it off, go silent about it, and then put something else in its place. This is silly if he's hurting. And you know Phoenix is. All right, so uh, we had a pay-per-view this weekend, and it was the uh, Fastlane pay-per-view. And I, I, I enjoyed it in the sense that I thought the... I thought the opening match was great. I thought there was nothing on the show that was bad. I laughed uproariously at John Cena's performance on the show. And not in a bad way. I mean, I don't want to make him mad, but he was a total gimmick. And uh, and the main event, I mean, for a last man standing match, which, you know, traditionally I hate those in WWE, I thought they, they had a good last man standing match. But, I mean, the big thing on the show was if you want to watch a show where, like, stuff's happening, you can watch the opener and then shut it off. Because that was the only thing on the show where, like, something happened. And what happened was Cody Rhodes and Jey Uso beat Finn Balor and Damian Priest to win the tag team titles. And the finish of the match saw J.D. McDonough try to use the briefcase, but he accidentally hit Priest, who already hates him, in the knee, and that eventually led to the finish. So a lot of stuff happened in that Judgment Day storyline. And then later, obviously, you know, Damian Priest would want to cash in after a last man standing match, but Rhea Ripley basically commanded him, we're leaving. Today is not the day. So, you know, this Triple H fella, you know, he likes to go slow, and he's been planting seeds you know, he's planted about 9 million seeds. He's going to have quite a garden by the time this all sprouts. But uh, that Damian Priest split is coming one of these years. And uh, and this was another uh, several seeds in the garden of that. But, I mean, outside of that, it's like we had uh, Ray and Santos beat the Street Profits and Lashley when Carlito finally made his debut. And he just showed up and he made a comeback and he won. He's got new updated like, music. Okay. That was cool, I guess. <laughs> and then we had... He'll still spit in your face if you don't want to be cool, Brian. It doesn't say that anymore. He goes, do you know what it means to be cool? Uh-oh. And I'm like, no, I'm very old. So then we had uh, EO Sky, Oscar, and Charlotte, which EO won. And it was like, you know, they had a fine three-way match. There were a lot of moves. But in the end, it was just like, EO won. Okay. And then we had John Cena and LA Knight versus The Bloodline. And it was just simple. John Cena got in there. He sold for a long time. He tagged L.A. Knight. L.A. Knight made the Superman come back and won. John Cena was like a cartoon character. But that was it. And then the main event, Seth beat Shinsuke. And that was it. The show went off the air. So I guess we wait for tonight. 
Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.